To those listening on the radio outside, I hope they can hear uh, okay as normal. Good. That's a good sign. And to those who are joining us uh, online uh, in our service as well. The online streaming isn't happening this morning, but the service will be uploaded uh, a little later on uh, this afternoon. Just some announcements for the coming week. Uh, next week, of course, we have our service here at half past 11. It'll be family, ser- family worship in the context of Holy Communion. Uh, I began my ministry in the parish with a service of Holy Communion And I want to mark the conclusion of my ministry here with with Holy Communion. There's only one service next week, half past 11 here in the building. And if you want to join us for that, you do need to book online. You can do so through the usual means uh, of ticket source or via the parish office by contacting Heather on Tuesday, Wednesday or Thursday uh, mornings from half past 10 to half past 1. I would say if next week is anything like the last number of weeks have been, you need to get in early if you want to come, uh, because by sort of Wednesday evening, isn't that right, by Wednesday, Heather, we've been, we've been booked out. Uh, so, so if you want to join us next week in the building, uh, be a wee bit like you'd be booking for a concert or a sports event, sitting refreshing at half ten. Uh, isn't that the way it works, Ruth? Refresh, refresh, uh, something like that. Uh, next Sunday, half eleven here uh, in the church building. There's no evening service next week. However, tonight there is an evening service, It is Holy Communion here in the church, and there's still some availability for that. You can book in through Ticket Source or say to the stewards as you're leaving church this morning, and they'd take your name and get you booked in uh, for that service uh, this evening. On Tuesday evening, we have our vestry meeting, and that's at half past seven. It'll be in the Churchill room of the parish hall, so that's upstairs. Uh, For those who have already replied to say you're coming, thank you very much. And for those who have replied, you will get an agenda within the next uh, 24 hours. If you haven't yet indicated that you want to come to that vestry meeting, then please do so by letting Jane know, uh, the select vestry secretary, as soon as you can, so that you can get the papers before that meeting uh, as well. Again, it's part of the new norm. We have to book in for these things as part of our track and trace system uh, in the parish. There's no Bible study this week. We concluded our series last Wednesday night Uh, on 1st John and uh, it was a good study it lasted a lot longer than perhaps we thought it would but it was good nonetheless to study that book uh, together and so as we come to worship God together let's just take a moment of stillness and quietness in his house as we prepare to worship him as we collect our thoughts as we pray inwardly that God through the power of his Holy Spirit would come and minister to each of us and we would receive directly from him uh, this morning and as we pray inwardly the band will join us Uh, here at the front. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come on to thee. We're going to worship together as we sing King of Kings. Today is Christ the King Sunday. Um, We're singing, King of Kings, Majesty, uh, God of Heaven, living in me. And let us stand as we worship God together. Let's praise God. King of Kings, Majesty, God of Heaven. Love eternal, faithful, and true. 
but while I lay my own before you now, in royal robes I don't deserve, I live to serve your majesty. Sing that last verse again, earth and heaven. Holy baptism is administered to infants on the understanding that they will be brought up in the fellowship of Christ church, that they will be taught the Christian faith, and that when they have publicly confessed this faith, they will be confirmed by the bishop and admitted to the Holy Communion. And so with this in mind, we confess our sins together. It's our culture within the Church of Ireland, it's our tradition that when we meet together as God's children, we say sorry for the sins in our lives, the sins of us as a church community, the sins of us as a nation. And so let us confess our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need his forgiveness as we kneel or sit together. Lord God, you created the world and made us in your own image. Forgive us when we turn away from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, through your Son, you overcame evil and death. Rescue us from slavery to sin. Christ, have mercy. Lord God, by your Spirit, you restore us to fellowship with you and with one another. Breathe your love and freedom into our lives. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for today, the Sunday before Advent, Christ the King Sunday. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ descended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So we're going to read together from God's Word. We're reading from the book of John from John chapter 18, beginning to read at verse 28. John chapter 18, beginning at verse 28. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus to Caiaphas, to the place, to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early in the morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, they did not enter the, the palace, because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, We would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, they objected. 
This took place to fulfill what Jesus had said about the kind of death he was going to die. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea? Jesus asked. Or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. Your own people and chief priests handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by a Jewish leader. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into this world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this, he went out again to the, Jewish, the Jews gathered there and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, no, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in an uprising. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we're going to join together in our kids' song, which is full of actions. And we're going to sing, Jesus, you're my superhero. A wee bit too quick. We're going to sing, Jesus, you're my superhero. You all know the actions to this one now, I hope. For those of you visiting with us, watch me, Hannah, Amy, Ruth. We'll somehow keep you right uh, as we join in together in Jesus, you're my superhero.
CrossFit workout done for this week? Who said church was dull? Let's just pray together. Father, we thank you for your love amongst us. We thank you that you sent your son who is the king of kings. We now pray, O Lord, that you'd open our eyes that we would see Jesus, open our ears that we would hear his voice, and open our hearts that we would receive him into our lives. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I've said it a few times already this morning, today is Christ the King Sunday, the Sunday before Advent. Now, those of us who are of a certain vintage and remember the old black book, prayer book, the Book of Common Prayer in operation, will have known today by a different name. Anybody know what that is? Somebody want to shout it out? Ah, you are great. Stir up Sunday. Stir up, O Lord, we beseech thee. And we'll be thinking a bit more about that tonight in our evening service. But it's also known in the uh, Revised Common Lectionary as the Sunday of Christ the King, or the Kingship of Christ, where we're encouraged just before we enter the penitential season of Advent, when we're encouraged to think of Jesus as the King of all creation, how he is Lord of all. And that's why our hymns this morning have already been King of Kings, Majesty, Jesus, you're my superhero, that Jesus is the King. He is King over all the earth. Now, let's just think for a few moments. Uh, boys and girls here in church, you might want to tell me, can anybody think of who might be a king? Who would wear a crown? Because kings tend to wear crowns, don't they? So who do we know that we would see in our TVs that might wear crowns? Who do you think? Victoria, do you know? Jesus, yeah, you've gone straight to the end, and that's great. Jesus wears a crown. We're going to come to that in a moment. Anybody else that we can think of that we might see doesn't have to be a man that wears a crown. Victoria, sorry, Isabella. The queen, the queen wears a crown. It's a rather grand crown. Has anybody been to London to see it in the Tower of London? Yeah, lots of people have. The queen wears a crown. Who else might be described as a king? Certain vintage of people might know. Who do you think? Who do you think? I knew it was your age. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're in a bad place. <laughs> I'm not away yet. <laughs> Elvis, the king. <laughs> All right. Okay, but what's the role of a king? What does a king or a queen do? What's their purposes? What do you think a king or a queen does? Eloise, do you know? Bosses people around. Okay, yep. Possibly, yeah. What else, Ben? Have you any idea? What does a king or a queen do? They spend money. Okay, yep, they spend money. Let me see, who else have we got in shirts that may be able to tell us what a king or a queen does? Jimmy Ryan, any idea up there in the gallery? Maybe Nanny wants to shout it out. What do we think? As a leader? Yeah, a king or a queen could be a leader. Victoria, what do you think? Commands people, yep, okay. What else might they do? What other things might they do? Well, in commanding people, what do you think? Harry, have you any idea? They rule over the country, yep, they do. And how do they do that? What, what do they make? What does kings and queens sometimes make? Maybe not so much now as they would have years and years ago. Now they just sign them off. Victoria, what do you think? They make a law. They make laws which help us to live our lives better and to make sure that we love each other as we should love each other, that we don't hurt each other, and that we, we do all the things that we should be doing in order to live in a peaceful society. Now, today's Christ the King, and as Victoria said at the very start, the very first question, Jesus is our King. Isn't that right? And Jesus wears a crown. But it's a crown that's different from that one that you would see on TV or that one that we see in, uh, in London. But he still wears a crown because he is the King of Kings. And he is the Lord of Lords. He is the God of Gods. And you know, we named some people there. You named Queen Elizabeth, for example. Queen Elizabeth II. 
Remarkable lady, but has a remarkable faith. And even she bows down before the king of kings. Now, whenever we would go to see the queen, if you've ever met her, you'll know that whenever you go in, the gents would bow, ladies would have to curtsy, and you have to be very careful what you say and how you say it and when you say it, and don't speak to her unless she speaks to you, and all those sorts of things. You all know those little, little protocols that we have to go through? Well, though we have to bow to her, she doesn't bow to us but she does bow to Jesus because Jesus is the king of all kings. And she once said that she only wore her crown because Jesus allowed her to wear that crown. And if you listen to her Christmas speeches, next week we begin our build up to Christmas. And if you listen to the queen's Christmas speeches, the vast majority of them end with, or at least contain in it, a challenge to us on how to live our Christian lives. And in one of them in particular, she asked the question, what does Jesus ask of us? What does the king of kings, the baby of Bethlehem, ask of us? What shall I give him but give him my all? As she quoted the Christmas carols. So this morning, there's a challenge for each of us. Do we bow before the king of kings? Is Jesus our king? Is he a king of our lives? And so... The queen commands and people do it. Jesus commands, do we do it? The queen signs off laws, do we do it? Jesus gives us laws contained within his word, the Bible. Do we read them and do we do what they say? Is he in our lives? Have we asked him into our hearts? This morning in John's gospel, the gospel for today from John 18 is Jesus standing before Pilate. And it's kind of like mastermind. It's that quiz show that's going ahead. Did anybody last night watch on TV the Michael McIntyre quiz show, The Wheel? Anybody watch it? Or was I the only person sitting in front of the telly at that time? Others did. Did you ever see so many wrong answers in your life? And the same person popping up and down. Anyway, Jesus stood before Pilate. It was like an early day quiz show 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. Pilate says, who are you? Are you a king? And Jesus said, it's you that says it, not me. Pilate says, well, I'm not a Jew, so how do I know if you're a king? And Jesus says, well, actually, yes, I am a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. You see, Jesus does sit on a throne. The queen or the king sits on a throne. Jesus does sit on a throne. And he calls us to one day stand before him and to answer And we'll have a question to answer, and that is, do we know him? Do we love him? It'll not be, are you a king, or are you a queen? Are you a lord? Are you a lady? Are you a duke, or a duchess? It'll be, do you love Jesus? Do you love him with all your heart? And let me encourage you this morning, on this Christ the King, to ask Jesus into your heart. To welcome him into your life. To make him king of all that there is in your life. In a few moments' time, we're going to holy baptism. And a couple of weeks ago, I explained the the purposes behind baptism. And I don't want to go over that all again. But this morning, what we're doing is saying that Jesus is king, and we want him to be king over our candidate's life. And we trust and pray that when this child grows up, that he will, like us all, accept Jesus to be king of our lives. His mom and dad, his godparents, are saying this morning, Jesus is my king. Can we all with them say Jesus is our king as we profess our faith together during the creed in the middle of the service? I trust and pray that every single one of us in this church this morning knows Jesus. Those listening on the radio, those watching online, Jesus needs to be king of your life because when he is king of your life, you know that when this world ends, you will be where there is a higher throne. You will be with him and his kingdom forever. The epistle for today, which we'll read tonight, is from Revelation. It's Revelation chapter 1. And it talks about how Jesus is one day going to return as king of all. He will return to the sky. He will call his people to himself, where his kingdom will reign forever and ever and ever. Will you be there? Will we be there in his kingdom forever?
Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the King of kings, that you are the Lord of lords, that you are God of all, and that you sit on a higher throne. May each of us bow before you now so that when you call us to yourself, we are fully prepared to be in that place where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. For we pray this in your name. Amen. As we prepare for the act of baptism, we're going to sing together a well-known hymn, There is a higher throne than all this world has known. And we praise God together. Please be seated. Uh, Godparents and parents will, will remain standing for this part of the service.
We welcome those who come to be baptized, and I invite his sponsors to present him now. Parents and godparents, will you accept the responsibilities placed upon you in bringing Ari for baptism and answer on his behalf? By your own prayers and example, by your teaching and love, will you encourage him in the life and faith of the Christian community? In baptism, Ari begins his journey in faith, and you speak for him today. Will you care for him and help him to take his place within the life and worship of Christ church? He's getting restless. It's all right, wee man. I won't drown you, I promise. <laughs> In baptism, God calls us from darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, parents and godparents, I ask, do you reject the devil and all proud rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbor? Do you turn to Christ as Savior? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ the way, the truth, and the life? So the congregation, please stand. And there's a question for us, because we all have a part to play uh, in this baptism. You've heard these, our brothers and sisters, respond to Christ. And so will you support them in this calling? So parents and godparents, do you believe and accept the Christian faith into which Ari is to be baptized. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you to profess together with these candidates the faith of the church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty Father, we pray that you'd pour out your Holy Spirit upon this water, that he who is to be baptized in it may be made your child by adoption and grace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, how is this going to work? <laughs> okay, right, are you ready? I think so. All right, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we blame Daddy. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Okay, do you want to try and hold him over the bowl? Okay. There goes nothing. And so, Ari, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ah, oh, good boy. Well done. Christ claims you for his own. So receive the sign of the cross. Confess Christ crucified. Live as a disciple of Christ. Fight the good fight. Finish the race. Keep the faith. Confess Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. Look for his coming in glory. So, Ari, God has called you into his church. We therefore receive and welcome you as a member with us of the body of Christ, as a child of the one heavenly Father, and as an inheritor of the kingdom of God. Ari, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you 
and give you his peace this day and forevermore. Amen. And so I think it's only right that we give this wee family a round of applause as Harry's welcomed into the fellowship. Excellent. Now, gift time. All right. Got a little present for you. All right. It's, it's, it's a book. All right. Maybe a tractor or a car or something might be more of an interest. But this is for Ari to, to, to play with and to read. And his mom and dad can read it to him. His first Bible, as we, we do with all baptism candidates, and his baptism certificate as well. Well done. Congratulations. Only a year and a half after we were first asked. COVID's not our fault. Thank you very much. So Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us in one body by the cross. We meet in his name. We share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Now within our bubbles, we can share the sign of peace. Outside of that, just sort of nod or wave at each other. But let's together share uh, the Lord's peace with one another. With you. And let us kneel or sit together as we pray. Father, we thank you for this glorious day. We thank you for Ari and for his life. And that he has now been born again of water and of the Holy Spirit and has become your child by adoption and a member of your church. Grant that he may grow in the faith in which he has been baptized. Grant that he may profess it when he comes to be confirmed. Grant that he may bear witness to it by a life of service to others. And that all things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray that you would bless Ari's home. Give such grace and wisdom to all who have the care of him, that by their word and good example, they may teach him to know and love you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we who have been brought from death to life, dedicate ourselves to you. Produce in us the fruit of your spirit, Equip us to serve your people and advance your gospel in the world. Enable us to live in holiness and righteousness and to please you in all that we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Ari's parents, for his godparents. We pray, Lord, for the parents and godparents of Ari. Give them the spirit of wisdom and love. May they watch him grow up to love and reverence you. May their home be a joy, be a place of truth and love. And help each of us who this day have committed to support them in their calling, to play the part that you have called us to play. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for this world, for all believers across it, that each of us may stand as lights for Christ, may proclaim Christ as King in our lives, so that all people in all nations may come to know you because of our testimonies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for our own community, for those we know and love, for our own homes, for our own families and our own friends. We pray, Lord, for those who are ill, known and unknown to us. We pray for those who are suffering as a result of COVID-19. We pray, Lord, for those who are bereaved and ask that your comforting spirit may be with them in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a moment of stillness and quietness, we bring our own prayers and our own requests to God's throne of grace. (laughs) 
Lord, in your mercy. Rounding all our prayers and praises into one, we pray as Christ our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless one another with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. We're going to sing together our final hymn, Shine, Jesus, Shine. Whenever we finish singing this, we'll have the benediction. Then you'll be asked to remain seated until the stewards direct you as to when uh, to leave church this morning. As always, those listening on the radio will depart via the church lane. And those parked in the car park that are inside church will exit through the bottom gate onto St. Andrew's View and up onto True Mount Road uh, that way. So we sing together, Lord, the light of your love is shining. Let's stand as we praise God together. Lord, the light of the Lord.
Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Please be seated.